Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into the world of British slang and expressions. Whether you're planning a trip to the UK, binge watching British TV shows, or just want to sound a bit more like a local, these are phrases that you need to know. So grab yourself a cuppa and let's get cracking. All right, let's start with some words you'll hear when people are talking about well, people. First up, we've got bloke. This is your go-to word for guy or man. If you hear someone say, he's a nice bloke, they're just saying he's a nice guy. He's a good guy. Simple as that. Number two, lad. Lad is often used to refer to a young man and you'll especially hear it in reference to groups of friends, like he's out with the lads, meaning He's hanging out with his mates. Number three, bird. Bird is slang for woman. You might hear someone say, he's out with his bird, meaning he is with his girlfriend. Number four, love. I love this one. Now, love is a bit more versatile, right? It's a term of endearment, often used by shopkeepers or strangers. For example, here you go, love when handing your change. Here you go, love. See you later, love. Bye, love. It's warm, friendly, and used all over the UK. And yes, you can say this to anybody, man, woman, it doesn't matter. We all understand what it means. So yeah, we don't take offense. Now let's talk about some slang to describe how people are feeling or acting. Number one, daft. Whew. Daft is a lovely word to describe someone who's being a bit silly or foolish or rude, but it's not particularly offensive. We all get it. We get it. Hey, don't be daft, man. You might say if someone is worrying unnecessarily, don't be daft. You know, it's affectionate, not harsh. We love it. I love to call people daft. Number two, bonkers. If someone's bonkers, they're crazy, but in a fun way. Hmm. Yeah, so they're crazy in a fun way. Interesting. Imagine your friend decides to run a marathon on a whim. <laughs> You're bonkers, you'd say. It's playful, not mean. Yes. Number three, got it. I love this one. Got it. Now, got it is when you're really, really disappointed about something. You didn't get the job, you must be gutted. It's like feeling like someone punched you in the stomach emotionally. You just feel so gutted. You must be gutted that your team lost the match. I hear you. Number four, naked. Naked. Naked means exhausted. After a long day at work, you might say, I'm absolutely knackered. It's that deep bone tired feeling. Number five, chaffed. Chaffed. On the flip side, if you're really pleased about something, you say, I'm chaffed. I'm chaffed a bit. For example, I'm chaffed with my new car. It's pure satisfaction. Number six, buzzing, buzzing, or oh, I'm buzzing, man. So if you're buzzing, you're super excited or full of energy. Like I'm buzzing for the concert tonight, man. I am buzzing. It's like having a little electricity running through your whole body. I'm buzzing, man, buzzing. Now, let's learn some phrases that you will hear in everyday British life. Number one, leg it. I love this one, leg it. Now, to leg it means to run away quickly, usually from trouble. Imagine you're in a situation that is a bit dodgy, right? And someone shouts, yo, leg it. You just, you better run. You run for your life, man. Just don't look back, just run. Number two, to nick. To nick means to steal something that is not yours. If someone says, he nicked my wallet, 
it means that they took it without permission, they stole it. Or you might hear, the police nicked him, meaning they arrested him. Number three, to be cheeky. Cheeky. Being cheeky means being a bit naughty or mischievous in a charming way. I like this one as well. He's a cheeky lad. You might say about someone who is, you know, who teases you, but in a way that makes you smile, for example. He's a bit cheeky today, right? Yeah, we all get it. Number four, to crack on. To crack on means to get started or to carry on doing something. Yeah, you better crack on with your work. If you've got a lot of work to do, you might say, right, I need to crack on with this. It's all about getting down to business. Man, you've got a lot to do. I'll let you crack on. Number five, faffing around. On the flip side, faffing around is when you are wasting time and not being productive. Stop faffing around and get on with it. It's what you say when someone is being, you know, dilly dallying, whatever, yeah? Not doing what they're supposed to do. British pubs and shops are gold mines for slangs and expressions. These are some of the ones that you will hear. Number one, take the piss or take the mick. To take the piss or take the mick means to mock or make fun of someone, but usually in a way that is not very offensive, you know, in a light-hearted way. If your friend is wearing, say, a ridiculous hat, you might say, yo, are you taking the piss? That looks ridiculous. <laughs> it's all in good fun, but be careful. It can sometimes be taken the wrong way, right? So don't take the piss all the time. Are you taking the piss? Are you mocking me? Are you making fun of me, right? Number two, pissed. Be warned. Pissed in the UK doesn't always mean angry, like in the US. When we say, well, if you say, well, if you look angry and you say, I'm pissed, everybody will understand what you mean. But in the UK, pissed is more commonly used to mean drunk. So if someone says he is absolutely pissed, they've had way too much to drink. They're just wasted. Oh, wasted is another one. Wasted. Now, it's all about context, you know, context is king. Number three, can't be asked. I can't be asked. This one is for when you're feeling particularly lazy. If you can't be asked, it means you just can't be bothered. Should I clean the house today? Nah, I can't be asked, man. Too lazy. Number four, dosh or quit. Dosh is slang for money and quit is slang for a pound, one pound, a pound. So I'm short on dosh. Can you lend me a pound? Or that will be 20 quid, please. Simple, but essential. Used all over. Number five, a fiver or a tenner. A fiver is a five pound note and a tenner is a 10 pound note. So if you're at a shop and the cashier says, that's a tenner, please, you know it's 10 pounds. Or if they say, that's a fiver, you know it's five pounds. Or if they say, that's a quid, you know it's only one pound. All right, number six, cheers. Cheers is not only used for toast. In the UK, cheers is also a way of saying thank you or goodbye. You might hear it when someone holds the door for you, like, cheers, mate. Or when you live in the bus, you might say, cheers. And here are a few more that don't quite fit into the categories, but are just as important. They are very important. And number one, we're starting like, you can't make a video about English slang and expressions and not include in it. You just can't. You can't. Now, in it is a contraction of isn't it? And it's often used at the end of sentences for emphasis or agreement. For example, it's a nice day today, isn't it? It's a bit cold today, isn't it? 
Oh, it's lovely, innit? That's a nice car, innit? That's expensive, innit? It's a very common way to confirm something. Yeah, used all the time. Number two, dodgy. You can't leave dodgy out of the list. You have to include it. Dodgy is used to describe something that is suspicious or not quite right. That used car looks a bit dodgy, you might say, if it seems like it's about to break down. Mm, yeah, it looks a bit dodgy. That guy looks a bit dodgy, he looks suspicious. If someone's lost the plot, they're acting irrationally or crazy. Maybe your boss is making ridiculous decisions. So you'd say, I think he's lost the plot. I think he's gone cuckoo. Yeah. Number four, a kappa. You can't leave kappa behind, man. You can't leave kappa outside of the list. Kappa is a classic, right? It just means a kappa tip. So if someone asks, you fancy a kappa? They're offering you a brew, a nice cup of tea. Now it's more than a drink. It's a whole British tradition and it's used all the time. And number five, Lou, 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 Lou. We can't forget Lou, man, like the British word for toilet. I need to go to the Lou, man. If you need to use the bathroom, just ask, where's the Lou, please? Everybody will understand. You'll be good to go. Number six, proper. Proper is, a, is used to emphasize something that is being genuine or real. For example, if you have a proper meal, it's a full, satisfying meal. Or if something is proper good, it's really, really good. Number seven, skint. Skint means that you are broke, out of money. I'd love to go out today with you guys, but I'm skint. It's that feeling when payday can't come soon enough. Yeah, I'm just, I ain't got no money. <laughs> Number A, cracking. Cracking is a positive word used to describe something that is great or impressive. Cracking job, man. That was a cracking game. It means that the game was fantastic. You've done a cracking job, man. You've done a really good job. Impressive. So there you have it a quick guide to some of the most British slang and expressions that you need to know to up your English game. Next time you're in the UK or chatting with British friends, you will be speaking like a proper local in it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more tips on mastering English. Oh, and by the way, before I go, you see that video right there? It's about slang words as well. I talk about many more slang words that I didn't cover in this video, so I'll see you there.